It's been a long, long time since I've done a holistic settings video, and the last one I did nearly a year ago now is very popular and people still ask me a whole bunch of questions about it, so I thought I'd do an updated version here. Let's start with the button layout. This depends on your controller type and preference, but if you use a standard controller without extra buttons or panels, I have some great suggestions for you to level up your skill in gunfights. I personally use stick and move, where melee and jump are swapped, so the right analog when clicked in is the mantle or jump, meaning when you're in a gunfight and aiming around, you can easily and intuitively jump shot. The most popular alternative to stick and move is tactical, where the melee button in the default layout, which is the right analog, becomes the crouch and prone button. Again, so when you're in gunfights, you can just drop to the floor and be harder to hit. For standard controllers, you've got to get one of these on to level up your movement and be more difficult to hit. A little helping hand on top of this is to flip your controls by clicking X or square, which then changes your triggers or back buttons that you usually aim in or shoot with to the bumpers, which you usually throw grenades with. The reason this swap can be useful is because the response time between you clicking down and the action on the screen is marginally quicker. We're talking milliseconds, but sometimes that can be the difference between winning and losing a gunfight. For more advanced controllers with back panels and buttons, since you can jump and crouch with the back panels, meaning you don't have to swap everything around. For stick layout presets, leave this as default. For invert vertical look, put this as disabled unless you have some preference where you actually like inverted controls. For dead zone, you want this as low as you can go without having stick drift. So essentially, dead zone represents the amount that you have to press your analogs before there's a response on the screen. So obviously, you want as low as possible, meaning you get the fastest response. But if everyone had theirs on zero, you'll start to see that your analogs are probably slightly worn and you get drift. It's not worth the instant response time if you can't hit your shots. Currently, mine is on 0.03, as you can see, essentially because this controller is very new. But to test your out, go into a match and leave your controller alone and see if your character is moving without any input from you. If there is, you need to increase your dead zone. If there isn't, maybe try and put it lower so you get those quicker response times. Okay, for horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity, again, you kind of want this as high as you can go without your aim being compromised. Currently mine's on 5.5, which isn't super quick, but does mean I can handle my aim pretty well and hit a lot of shots. Generally, you'll see a lot of professional players and top players use something around the 5.5 or 6.6 mark. But like I say, if you can handle higher, then that's absolutely great. I actually made a separate video that looks just at your sensitivity settings, so you can figure out what's best for you. I'll link that down in the description, or you can click it in the top right corner now. Now we're on to ADS sensitivity multiplier, meaning when you're aiming down your sights, what you're sensitivity is at. Thankfully, we've got two separate settings here, one for low zoom, which is anything under 3.25 times, and high zoom, which is anything over that. So essentially, we can narrow this down to normal scopes and sniper scopes. This can come down to personal preference, but I like to put my low zoom at 0.9, so this is slightly slower than my vertical and horizontal sensitivity. That means I can hone in on my enemy and just be a little bit more accurate. For high zoom, I've gone even lower at 0.8. I figure when I'm using a sniper, it's rare that I'm tracking someone at high speed, so I want to be able to to control those tiny movements in my aim. For aim response curve type, this is kind of a weird one and very much comes down to your preference. First of all, you need to understand what this setting means. And essentially it means how much movement you're getting on your screen relative to the input from your sticks. Now I know this sounds a little bit like sensitivity, but it's slightly different than that. So with linear, for example, the amount you move your analogs is directly represented on the screen. Whereas with standard, when you move your sticks, you're gonna get a slower movement in the initial phase before it speeds up. And then dynamic is kind of the opposite of that. In the initial phase of movement with your analogs, you actually move quicker before slowing down. So I run dynamic because I want to kind of snap onto people when I'm aiming, but standard gives you a lot more control. I actually plan to move to linear in the near future just so I have total control of my aim. Ideally, I don't really want to be second guessing algorithms, kind of changing my aim and things like that. So like I say, it's kind of personal preference, but I did make a whole video just on aim response curve type so you can find out the best for you. Again, that's down in the description and in the top right corner now. Controller vibration, put this disabled. You don't really want any distractions or anything running down your battery unnecessarily. One of the best parts about being on controller is that you actually get aim assist on Warzone. So whatever you do, don't disable it. With the standard precision and focusing settings, you can essentially think of them in regards to two separate aspects. The radius around the enemy where the aim assist can take place, and then the strength of that aim assist. So with standard, you have the largest bubble around the enemy, but the weakest drag. 
With precision you get the smallest bubble so you have to be particularly accurate for the aim assist to kick in. But once you're on them the aim assist is much stronger than standard. Then finally for focusing you kind of get a middle range bubble around the enemy but an incredibly strong drag when you actually get on them. So here it says best for new to analog aiming and I can kind of see why it is very forgiving and helps you out a lot. The downside to this is if you see more than one enemy at a time it can be hard to have total control and go from one enemy to the other without kind of getting stuck on one. Okay, I'm trying to not plug all my videos too much here, but again, I have made a separate video on this, which you can find in the description and in the top right corner. It's only like three minutes long, so don't worry. It's there if you just want to find out a little bit more. Okay, moving on. For weapon mount activation, keep it on ADS and melee. It's just pretty natural and gives you the best control when running around the map. Weapon mount movement exit also enabled. Again, makes it feel quite natural. Aim down sight behavior, steady aim behavior, equipment behavior. Leave these on all hold, it's what we've been used to in Call of Duty and pretty much every other first person shooter for years, unless you've got a strong preference to put on toggle. For use slash reload behavior, you want this on contextual tap. This was one of the first big settings that separated the speed of looting back in the early days of Warzone, but I appreciate some people might have just started or just missed out on this altogether. Basically this means when you're running around and opening chests and looting in general, you can just tap your button rather than hold it, saving you a few seconds with every single interaction. Be sure to remember that you do have this on though if you have just changed it, because if you're near something that you can interact with, you need to hold on to that button to then reload. So for example, if you're on a chopper, you'll need to hold on to that button to reload, otherwise you're going to be jumping out of it. Depleted ammo weapon switch, have this on enabled. This is pretty much standard for Call of Duty and why not have that extra little bit of help? For armor plates behavior, this is very much up to you and doesn't matter too much. Whether you have it on apply one or apply all, it basically puts armor on at the same speed. And you can cancel halfway through if an enemy is nearby. Now we're on to movement, which is a very important aspect in Warzone. For slide behavior, we want this on tap rather than hold. Again, it means everything is much quicker. That tap is always quicker than a hold. And if you're trying to slide cancel, you need it on tap. For auto move forward, this doesn't matter too much again. I've got it on disabled just because I like the most control in that moment in time. But if you want the game to run across the map for you whilst you just relax and check your emails, pop it on enabled. For automatic sprint, I highly recommend you put this on auto tack sprint. It might take a little while to get used to, but it increases the speed of your movements massively. Basically, it means as soon as you've got that tactical sprint available to you and you move forward, the game's just going to kick that in and then you're going to move a little bit quicker. That means you're going to move across the map a little bit quicker and also means when you're in gunfights, you can move that little bit quicker as well, being harder to hit. And an added bonus is that you won't shred your analogs too quickly on your controller, meaning you don't have to pump up that dead zone and reduce your response time or just get a new controller altogether. For vehicle camera recentering, it doesn't matter too much. I've just changed it to the same I actually did run this enabled, but I think disabled should help a little bit more when you're just trying to see enemies when you're in a vehicle. For parachute auto deploy, put this on disabled. Basically, this means you can pull your chutes closer to the ground, meaning you can get the drop on people even quicker. I can't remember the exact numbers, but with auto deploy, say if it makes you pull up your chute at around 10 meters, you can manually do this at say seven or eight meters. Okay, they aren't exact numbers, but you know what I mean. Okay, now we're on to general settings. For brightness, I've got this on 60. This is kind of as low as you really want to go with this. We know Warzone can be a very hard game to see people on, so we need every helping hand, which is why I run minimum 60. For safe area, that doesn't need much explaining, just make sure you've got it right and your hood fits perfectly. Film grain, put that on zero, it's just a distraction on screen and can actually make people harder to see. Tool tips, this doesn't matter too much. I've left mine on enabled, you can disable it, it really doesn't matter. For subtitles, I used to say disable these as these are a distraction, but actually I recommend you have them on enabled and I've been doing this for months now. And the reason for this is if an enemy does something like put down a claymore or get shot, sometimes you might not hear it, but the subtitles will pick that up and tell you. And it just gives you that little bit of extra information. Language selection, you can handle that yourself, I'm sure. Colorblind type, now I actually currently run Tritonopia. Since the Cold War integration with Warzone, all the color palette changed on the map. Now I find Tritonopia just makes the map pop a little bit more and adds some nice brightness to the map, which is why my brightness is currently only on 60 and not higher like it was when it was Modern Warfare Warzone. For colorblind target, it doesn't matter too much, but I've put on both, so it applies to everything on my game. For the world motion and weapon motion blur, I've put them both on disabled. It makes, it makes the game look less cinematic, but is easier to 
play and see people. For details and textures, we've got this on-demand texture streaming setting. Now if your broadband deal and internet connection allow, put this on high quality. The game renders a little bit quicker and it looks a little bit nicer. Those sharper images can sometimes be the difference between you seeing someone and not seeing someone. If you are worried about how much bandwidth this is going to take up, you can limit it. And you can also limit the amount you download per day. For minimap shape, we're still on square. You can see about 20% more than the alternative. For minimap rotation, that's enabled. It's kind of up to you, but it feels intuitive to me. For the compass, I've got mine on letters. Again, it doesn't matter too much, as long as you can communicate the direction with your squad effectively. For text chat behavior, I've got mine off, as well as the new message sound alert. If someone's messaging you in the final circle, you don't need those distractions, whether that's audio or visual. The content filters are completely up to you. I like my profanity, I want some gore, but that really is up to you. Now finally, we're on to audio. For the audio mix, I recommend Boost Low. Certain noises in the game are at certain frequencies. Footsteps are one of these noises that are on a low frequency. So if we're on Boost Low, we're boosting those lower frequencies to make them louder, ultimately making footsteps much easier to hear. I do have a video that goes over each of these audio mixes and where it might be best for your setup. So again, that's down in the description and in the top right corner now. For master volume, we want to leave this on 100. For music volume, I've put this on zero. It can be good for the theater of the game, but I don't want any distractions. I just want to hear what's going on in game to give me the most information and ultimately get more kills and maybe some wins. The dialogue volume I've put down to 40 for many of the same reasons as the music volume, but some of this can be useful with enemies shouting out. For effects volume, you actually want this pumped up, as this is things like footsteps. For juggernaut music, this is kind of up to you. You can put it disabled so you can hear as much background noise as possible, or you can put it enabled, get in the juggernaut mood, and get to work. Hit marker sound effects, that's completely up to you. I've gone for classic because I'm a COD4 boy. Mono audio, you want this disabled, so if you've got a headset on, you can understand the direction of which noises are coming from. Voice chat, of course, you want enabled. Voice chat device, that's up to you. For open mic recording threshold, the standard setting is okay for most people, but if your headset or voice is a little bit quiet, you can put this threshold down so your mic will stop picking up noises at lower volumes. Voice chat volume, mine's actually on 110 and the mic volume's on 100. Now I know this will be a little bit weird for some people if you do copy it directly, but I've got an audio mixer for my headset, so it is slightly different. Basically, you want people to be able to hear you okay through your microphone volume, and you want to be able to hear your squad in-game with your voice chat volume. You don't want them too loud that it drowns out game volume, of course, and that's why I do my own audio mixing. But if you're only doing your audio setting through these in-game settings, then you might want to put this down to 60 or 70, depending on how loud your squad is basically. Voice chat effect, I haven't actually tried out these other settings. I've left mine on no effect, I don't think it's going to make a difference at all. War tracks is a passenger, I actually recommend putting this on enabled, even though I run disabled. The reason I recommend putting on enabled is because you want that same vibe as the driver of the vehicle. You all want to be on the same wavelength with the same energy. I've put mine on disabled just because if I'm making videos or streaming, I'm going to get hit by some copyright infringements. And of course, you can control the volume there. Hopefully this updated settings video was helpful to you. If it was, maybe give it a like, and if you haven't already, subscribe for more Warzone videos, shorts, and streams. Bye for now.